Hello, I'm Charles from Charles N Photography. Today's photography tutorial isn't going to be all technical and all of this. Today it's really about having a bit of fun with a macro lens around our backyard. Sometimes we just can't get out. I don't always have the time of actually getting out exactly where I want. So I have to find ways of actually taking photos for my tutorials and all that at home. So today we're actually going to be doing some macro photography with some plants and all that from our backyard because photography is all about having fun. So today let's have some fun taking some macro photos of some flowers, some fruit and all that. So my gear for today, my Nikon D500 and I'm using my Tekina 100mm f2.8 lens. Now there is a big misconception and a lot of people think okay it's an f2.8 lens it's like a portrait lens so I should be able to use the lens at f2.8 at any time. Well not really because the closer you are to your subject the higher your aperture is going to be. So it's not going to be wide open at f2.8 if you're very close to your subject. At about 45 50 centimeters away from my subject I'm gonna get f2.8 but the closer I get to it the higher my aperture is going to be so if I'm only about 10 or 15 centimeters away from my subject I might actually be shooting at f4.5 so there's nothing wrong with the lens this is how all macro lenses work now let's start today by photographing these beautiful little bell flowers here now as you can see by this video I'm actually recording a little bit of video on my D500 to actually show you what we're actually going to be photographing. There's a little bit of wind around so the, the little flower is just moving around a little bit but when we take the photos everything is going to be nice and sharp. It just looks so nice. Now you could take this with a normal lens probably at this distance but when we get much closer to actually get some of that very fine detail we wouldn't be able to actually get this amount of detail. We're going to feel about photographing in RAW. We're just going to shoot in JPEG because I want to show you that when you start, whether you're using a macro lens, a kit lens or extension tubes on your kit lens to actually photograph items like this. Now understand with extension tubes you could actually get very similar photos. So if you've got extension tubes this video could help you out as well. This video is really aimed at people just starting out. People have already into photography, they'll get stuff out of this as well. A lot of people when they start out in photography, they actually just use JPEG. So this is what we're going to do today. What we get on the camera here will be our finished product. Yes, we can crop a little bit, but I'm not gonna look at doing any editing at all. So the photos you see on this video are actually gonna be straight out of the camera. What we do first is we go into the menu, we choose image size, sorry we choose image quality and we're going JPEG fine then we choose image size and we want the largest size possible now what we do is we go down to for the icons it's called picture controls now this is what a lot of people don't realize is that in picture controls you can actually control what your photo is going to look like now if you're shooting in RAW the picture control here is only give, going to give you an idea of what the JPEG, so it's a JPEG screenshot on the back of your LCD screen here and it's not going to give you what you're actually going to see in your raw file. Your raw file is going to be fairly flat but this is going to show you what your file could look like if the settings that were applied in the picture profile were applied to your raw file. We have standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape and flat. Now for me, I move away from standard straight away because standard is very similar to flat. It's a very neutral profile. We don't want that. We actually want some processing in our photo. Vivid is actually be a little bit too contrasting and it actually bumps the, the colors up too much. So I prefer to choose landscape. So we go set picture control landscape. We click OK. We're happy with that. So now all the inside of the camera is set up. We make sure that we actually set a two second timer delay if we're going to use the shutter button. But because I'm actually going to use the live view on here on the LCD screen, I don't really need to use the two second timer delay. 
So during the video, you might see that I might actually take the two second time of delay off, depending on what I do. We set up the white balance and all that. Now, how about we set up our aperture? So we're in aperture priority. Now it's showing my minimum aperture is f3.8. Nowhere near f2.8. So we're happy with that. Our ISO, we've actually selected ISO 400 because of what I said that there's a little bit of movement here. And it's showing me that at f3.8, my shutter speed is going to be 1 50th. So I'll actually bump up the ISO to ISO 500. Now you don't have to be worried about ISO 500 because if your image is correctly exposed in daylight, you're hardly going to see any digital noise in that. So ISO 500, and this is giving me one sixth of a second. How about we focus it? So we'll put it in live view. I've actually got a little bit more of a picture here. So I'll actually take it off the two second because I'm actually going to use the live view here. This is where a touchscreen on the back is so good because all I have to do is just touch the image and then that's it. It's taking the photo. So let's look at the photo. That looks really, really nice. There's just a little bit of movement. Let's look at our, well, it's actually saying that our shutter speed was actually 1 1 25th of a second. That looks really good. All I'm going to do now is to double check the focus, I'm actually going to take it off live view and actually manual focus to make sure that I'm actually in focus. So I bring it up, I take it off manual focus, that's it. All I have to do to take the photo is just touch on the live view because what I want is actually just a little purple bell here. I'm actually going to touch just on the purple bell. That's it. Now let's take a look at that. Now I'm also looking at the RGB highlights because there's a bit of brightness in the back here. I don't want that brightness blown out. That is spectacular. Now because I'm shooting at such an open aperture of f3.8, I'm not going to get a lot of the image. So what I'm going to do is I've still got a little bit in here. So I'm actually going to bring the tripod a little bit closer. That's it. Now let's take another one. Now I don't know if you heard but the camera struggled to focus and this is something that happens quite a bit because even though the flower is purple sometimes when it's this close cameras do struggle to focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera in live view and I'm going to take the autofocus off. Now this is what I like about the Tekinas because it's a push-pull focus here and the ring is so soft that it's so easily adjusted. If I want to really see if I've gotten focus, I just press the zoom button here. I can actually see exactly when I'm in focus. Press it once more. That's it. That just looks great. I will press a two second delay now because I'm not going to touch the LCD screen. I'll just pinch the screen here. Wow, look at the photo. It just looks magnificent. There's a bit of highlight in the back there, but f3.8 everything in the background is blurred. Now watch what happens if we increase our depth of field by increasing our aperture. So we'll come up to f5.6. We'll take another photo. Now I'm just going to make sure that I'm still in focus. That's it. Cool. You can actually see that we're starting to get a background is actually starting to, to come through. I'll actually show you as we keep going up from now we're at 5.6 we'll actually go to f8. We'll take another photo and we'll go now to f11. Now our shutter speed's dropping down here. So I'm blowing highlights just in the bottom right hand corner here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use exposure compensation and come down at least one stop. So this is hopefully going to take that brightness out. So we try again. That's it. The image is slightly darker. But that looks still pretty good. So we're at f11. So let's go now to f16. Beauty. Now you might think why did I actually go all the way up to f16? This is why you actually pay more for a macro lens than a kit lens. Because when you're using a macro lens it is quite often the case that you will be shooting minimum at around f11. But a lot of the time you'll actually be shooting at f16 to get that little bit of depth of field. 
If you want to like photograph insects and all that sort of stuff, then you're going to have to go to at least f11 or f16. You're not going to be wanting to shoot at f2.8 or f4 and all that because your depth of field is going to be so small. The other day I was out here with my daughter and we were trying to photograph this little ladybug and it was around 25 centimeters away from the camera just so I could get a bit of detail on it. I had to go to f11 and then even at f11 because the ladybug was turned a bit on its side all we had was just the head and the start of the ladybug's top of it. The rest of it was actually out of focus, was blurred. And because it moved so much, that's where I had to stop. It would have had to be at least at F16 to actually get about three quarters of the ladybug in focus. So this is why I said, like, I want to show you at F16. But you'll see here for this example that at F16, we've actually got a lot of depth at field too much for what we want. This is all about having fun, but to explain to you when you should use very shallow depth of field and when you should actually stretch that depth of field depending on what you're photographing. This looks very good like this and I'm photographing in landscape orientation because I'm doing this video tutorial. Let's put the camera now into portrait orientation because this is how I would actually be taking it if I was going to use this photo for myself. We're going to put the camera in portrait orientation, bring it down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the pot a little bit, turn it around. What I'm doing now is because I've got those highlights behind me here, I've actually turned it so that I'm blocking the highlights. So we're going to try to fill the frame. Remember we're shooting in JPEG, we're really wanting this to be end product. It looks really good. Now because I was taking in manual, we come back down here, we take it off live view and we focus. Wow, that just looks so good. Now I'm a little bit too close. I'll back it up a little bit because I was just too close to, to the bottom with the little tentacles hanging from the bell photo, bell layer. That looks really good. So all I'm going to do is just wait for a little bit of the wind to stop. I have to remember to come back down. Now we're at f4.2. Now remember I did put the exposure compensation on so I'm actually going to bring it back to zero. Now this is something I tell people whenever we change our photography and all that our position reset your exposure compensation because even if you turn the camera off exposure compensation will still be here so I haven't blown the highlights and the image is just a, it's nice but to me it's just a little bit bright so what I'm going to do is I'll use exposure compensation I'll just darken the photo a little bit by taking it down 0.7. Take photo that looks really good. It looks much better than this one here. So this was the first one. This is the one that I just took. This one here is slightly underexposed. It actually looks so much better. Now, we're at f4.2 because look at this. Only about 12 centimeters away from the flower. Let's just go straight up to f8. Make sure it's still in focus. That looks so nice. Now from f8, We'll just go straight to f16. Because the shutter speed is so low at f16, what I'm going to do is I'll actually take a photo with the time of delay. That's much better because our shutter speed was one quarter of a second. Because my hand was holding here, that was enough to induce a bit of camera shake. So that's enough for this one. Let's put our next subject and we'll quickly take a few photos of it. Here's our next subject. This nice little tomato very similar one like this here only about six centimeters across maybe five centimeters and this is the beauty of having a bit of fun remember but today having fun with macro so you can see here this is what it looks like on my camera so now we'll take it off video mode and we'll set up for taking some photos so one thing that i tell people and you actually probably saw in the first photo is that when we're photographing like this, unless we're photographing portrait orientation, I always like to try to keep the rules of thirds. To me, it's just something that just comes natural. But when you're learning photography, it's something you have to think about. If you put something in the center of your image all the time, people just straight away look at something in the middle and then move on. But sometimes having it just off center actually adds, even if there's hardly any depth at field, it just adds 
So it just looks better. So we'll bring it back down to F3.5. Like I said, wow, that just looks so nice. And I can actually see the bokeh here. Now the bokeh is what actually is out of focus. Nice and round. And this lens is actually renowned for having a very good bokeh there. Beautiful. So we'll take it off live view and two second delay. I don't have any problem with wind now because this little tomato isn't going to move. It's not on a stem or anything like that. Now that looks great. And can you see the bokeh at the back? Look at it. There's just nice little circles at the back and it actually emphasizes the photo. It actually looks really nice. And the color rendition on it is really good as well. So now we're at F3.8. We're gonna go straight to F8 and you'll actually see the difference. Now this photo is at F3.8 and this one is at F8. And you see the bokeh at the back? Now it's actually starting to become a distraction. And look what happens when we go to F11. Look at that. Now actually our background, the bokeh is actually starting to disappear. We're starting to see more of the background. And if we go all the way up to F16, our tomato is great, but now the background is actually detracting from our tomato. Now one thing that I should mention is that macro photographers that like photographing insects and all that, especially sort of stationary insects or little fungi, what they will do is they'll actually stack the images. So they might shoot at f3.5, f3.8, f4, and then they'll actually move their focus point slightly along. So they might start at the front of the fungi and move backwards along the, the depth of the fungi. That way they'll actually get the whole fungi in focus but it will still be for example at f4. Now if they were trying to get the same sort of photo they might have to be at f11 or f16. This is where we run into problems because if we shot at f16 to get for example the whole fungi in focus our background would be very noticeable and it would detract from the fungi. So this is why macro photographers, when they want to do this, they will actually stack a very shallow aperture photo together. They might take four, five, or even six photos and then blend them in Photoshop. We're happy with this, let's move on. So here's our last one for the day. So just these little nice purple flowers. And as you can see here, it actually looks really nice on the camera. They have a, like a dark bluey purpley color. Let's take some photos of it. I'll actually quickly put it into video mode here. Put it around a little bit. This. Bring the top down a bit in video just so that we've got a bit clearer video. There's actually some very tiny little spiders on here. I'm going to have to try to prod because I can see where it is. There it is. He's where is he? Yes, there he is. I'm just going to nudge him. Get up there. There he is. Can you see him there? Look at this. Now, <laughs> I have glasses on. When I actually picked this, I actually said, okay, well, this is the only one that would look really nice. I just cut the stem and brought it here. Look this. It's so cool. I'll just lift him up a little bit. Even better. We'll quickly take it off video. Let's quickly try to take some photos of this little spider. So we take it out like you actually gone back and hit himself. So to get me a little bit of depth on this, I'm actually going up to f5.6. I'm going to go back into, I was going to go back into live view, but I'll go out of live view. And I've actually got to tease him back up. Get back up there. Okay, is he there? Yes, beautiful. Now, he's actually not in focus. I actually have to move him in focus. There, beautiful. Now, this is where we actually would like more depth at field. So we'll quickly come up to 16. Just so we get the whole spider in. Understand like, I don't want to go away or anywhere, but this is where you actually like a very nice firm focusing ring. 
and this is the beauty with this Takina firm but it's not over firm sometimes the focusing ring on some lenses here is a little bit sloppy and it's so hard to get exact focus for sh short things like this here I can actually see his little beady eyes here beautiful now I'm at one fifth of a second at ISO 320 so what I do is my ISO to ISO 500 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my little holder here closer I can't go any closer because my tripod is touching the table so let's move this so it's actually a little bit closer to the lens he's moved actually hiding again so he's him again I don't want you to go down come on up here come on better well that's nice I'm actually a bit too close focus but that looks so good take one more it's such a fine line it's telling me focus there don't move that's it beautiful we'll come back to actually trying to do is actually see his eyes to make sure that his eyes are in focus now that's a little bit bright so quickly I'm actually just going to go into manual mode and this way I can actually control my aperture much better not my aperture my exposure so I actually want it that looks nice and I go 140th actually 150th because I just want just that little bit darker now it's a shame that look at this what am I eight centimeters away the little thing here is just so nice what I've done very quickly is I've just moved my little alligator clip holder here rotated it just so I could actually get it much closer now it's actually now only five centimeters away perfect he got his bum to me but that's fine that's it he's moving around a bit we'll leave him move and settle go to f14 that little bit more depth at field now just about serious here to really get this little spider I have actually just taken everything here gone into my office and set up with a bit of lighting there's no there wouldn't be wind around because at the moment understand that I'm so close like five centimeters away from the front of the lens that just the slightest amount of breeze is actually moving these little flowers around and because it's moving the flowers around it's actually moving the little spider around as well so slow, slow shutter speed and just to make it vibrate a bit so if I really want to be mission critical I would just move but whole idea of it today is just having fun so this is just a great way to finish off today's video tutorial on photography in our backyard I know about you I know you guys are watching the video but for me this really at the end was fun and it was a bit exciting too and for me also I'll actually be able to share this with my daughter because she loves the outdoors she loves all this sort of stuff so she'll actually get a kick out of actually seeing this little spider so watching if you liked the video give it a thumbs up ask any questions leave it in the comment box below subscribe to my youtube channel ask for Charles in photography six time